Hello, and welcome to Holy Redeemer. We are happy to celebrate this Mass with those of you who are here with us today and with all of those from our community who are watching at home. Today we celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. Please turn off any cell phones at this time. Our opening song is number 545, A Hymn of Glory, Let Us Sing, 545.
his kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt, dealt all, that you, with you, all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Show. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory, in his inheritance among the holy ones. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city 
until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethlehem, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Before the eyes of his closest followers, 40 days after his resurrection from the dead, so we're, we're celebrating it a few days late, 40 days was on Thursday, Jesus Christ ascended body and soul into heaven. But what exactly does this word ascended mean? Uh, we use this word for uh, a very particular reason. Every year on August 15th, we celebrate a different feast, Mary's Assumption into Heaven. So the Catechism of the Church tells us Mary was assumed into heaven. She was assumed. So there's a difference here. There's an important difference in the language here that reflects a difference in the reality. Christ ascends. Mary is assumed. Right? And this difference is in the difference between the nature of these two persons. Jesus Christ is God. He is the second person of the Holy Trinity become human. He is both fully God and fully man, a mystery so great that we cannot understand it completely, only partially. Our, bless, our mother, Blessed Mary, is immaculate, that is, she is free from sin, including original sin, but she is also the mother of Christ and therefore properly honored as the mother of God. But still, she is only human. She is a creature just like all of us, just like everything around us that we see. She does not possess the divine nature, as her son does. So this is why she could not cause herself to ascend into heaven, as Christ did. Instead, God had to take her up into heaven. And so we say that she was assumed. So Christ's ascension, in other words, reveals to us his divinity just in the same way that his resurrection did. Many people throughout salvation history have been raised or have raised others from the dead with the help of God's power, right? But only Jesus Christ rose from the dead on his own. As true God, he holds power over life and death. He is all-powerful, almighty, as we say uh, in the creed each week. And as true man, Jesus used that omnipotence, that all-powerful nature, to conquer death for our sake, to win our salvation, to redeem us. And by bringing redeemed human nature up into heaven, which he, he, he carried with him since he, is also, since he was fully human, he showed that along with being all-powerful, he is also all-good and all-loving. So Christ's ascension reminds us that there is no limit to the confidence that we can have in God because there is no limit to his power and his goodness. And this amazing fact of the ascension should, um, should edify us, should lift our minds and our hearts to heaven and heavenly things. Because we know that Jesus is now in heaven, body and soul. And because of this, we are assured that heaven is not just a nice idea, a myth, or wishful thinking. It is a real place where Jesus has gone ahead to prepare the way for us. One of Aesop's fables sort of is a, in a funny way, I think, kind of shows us how new this Christian revelation really was to the world. Now, Aesop... Uh, was famously a Greek slave who lived before the time of Christ and was renowned for his natural wisdom. Uh, and this is recorded in his famous fables, right? These, these short stories that have some sort of deep lesson in them. 
So one day, he was ordered by his master to go to public baths. So in, in ancient times, the public baths were kind of like country clubs. So this is where the wealthy landowners would come and congregate and hang out and talk and stuff. And so he was sent uh, on ahead to go there and, and prepare things for his master. So on his way there, he was stopped by one of the official judges in the city. And the judge, you know, asked him where he was going. And Aesop, thinking that it was really none of the judge's business, answered, I don't know. Now, the judge was uh, offended by this reply, which he considered disrespectful, and it probably was meant to be kind of disrespectful, or at least it was, it was pretty cheeky. And so he, he grabbed Aesop and marched him off to prison for punishment. At this time, disrespectful slaves could just be, could be punished without a trial. And when they arrived at the prison, Aesop turned to his captor and said, Your Honor, when I told you I don't know where I'm going, I was telling you the truth because I had no idea that I was on my way to prison. See, it's true, it's really true that we never really know just where we're going. And so faced with this explanation and probably, probably amused by the cleverness of it, the judge decided to let Aesop go free. Now this, this little story, I think kind of illustrates, uh, you know, the point that in, in pre-Christian humanity, there really was complete uncertainty about where we're going, about what happens after death. People just didn't know. They didn't have any way of knowing. There was nothing in their experience that could tell them that, right? There's not science, not philosophy, not the pagan religions of the time. None of these things could pull back the curtain on the afterlife. Only Jesus Christ has, sh has shined a light on this mystery by his life death, resurrection, and ascension. These historical events that took place in time, right, here on earth for, uh, for people to witness. Today the church is inviting us to uh, reflect on this great mystery of our faith, to be mindful of it, right, to remember it, Christ's ascension into heaven. And as we do this, may we feel our confidence in God renewed and strengthened. We're reminded tonight that Jesus is ruling history right now. And so none of the difficulties or injustices or problems that we face as individuals, as families, or as a society, none of these things is outside of his knowledge or power. He is at work in all things, even if it is sometimes hard for us to see exactly how, right? And sometimes it is. But we can have confidence that he is at work. How can we express this confidence, this hope in God? St. Ignatius of Loyola, uh, the great uh, sort of spiritual master and founder of the Jesuits, used to say that we should uh, pray as if everything depended upon God and work as if everything depended upon us. Each one of us has our projects, our dreams, our goals, our problems, and our challenges in life, right? This week, encouraged and strengthened by Christ's ascension into heaven, let us make an effort to pray each day for God to send his grace upon, upon those things, upon our, our projects, our goals, our problems and challenges. And then trusting that God will always be there to help and to guide us Let's work our hardest to make our efforts successful. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he didn't take the members of his church with him, right? He didn't have, like, extra tickets for, you know, for his closest apostles. Instead, he entrusted his mission to their care. And that mission, to follow Christ and to help others to do the same, is still going on today. And it's in our hands. And if we will fulfill our part to do our best in this, then we can be sure that God will do what remains.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified from Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glory and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ ascends into heaven not to abandon us, but to be our hope. Filled with certainty by this glorious event, we now offer our prayers and petition. Through the church, that the people of God will live with ardent hope for heaven, let us pray to the that the authority of heaven will guide the actions of those who govern on earth. And for peace, especially in Ukraine and other war-torn areas of the world, let us pray to the Lord. For Parish Kamalande, who received the sacrament of confirmation on Tuesday, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord, by their way of life, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord For Elizabeth Lauren Kazmarski, who was welcomed into the Catholic Church to the Sacrament of Baptism at Holy Redeemer this weekend, and for her parents and godparents, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord For the sick and injured, that the Lord may comfort them in their time. Especially Ann Nelson, Ron Bellamy, Ann Isaac, Paul Walton, and all of those listed in the Holy Hill and in Rome. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord For all the faithful departed, that our merciful and loving God may give eternal rest to them, as well as consolation to their families and loved ones who mourn. Especially the victims of violence at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Timothy Morton, brother in law Carol Wilkinson, and uncle of Angel Morton. Those mothers that we remember in the book of mothers is dead. And all those listed in the book of our beloved dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, because of the ascension of your Son, our human nature is now at home with you in heaven. May this truth be our lasting encouragement and hope. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace and there obtain your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilson, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive 
blots our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. May the gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This weekend we will be taking up our fifth Sunday collection following Mass at the Holy Redeemer School, an important mission of our parish. You'll see the baskets at the entrances of the church. Please be as generous as you're able. The Holy Redeemer Parish office and school will be closed this Monday, May 30th, in observance of Memorial Day. Morning Mass will be celebrated as usual at 8.30 a.m following 7.30 a.m. Holy Hour with Eucharistic Adage. And we have one more uh, announcement this evening. Uh, this week, we heard from the Archdiocese uh, that both Father Andrew and I will be receiving new assignments this summer, and we'll be leaving Holy Redeemer on July the 6th. Um, I'm going to be going to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church in Lexington Park, way down in St. Louis County. And Mother Andrew will be going to St. Jane Francis de Chantal Church in Bethesda. Uh, we are, good news is we are getting replaced, so you will still have priests here. Uh, Father Robert Golas will be coming here as pastor. Father Golas is currently the pastor of the Holy Ghost Church in Issue, Maryland, which is in Charles County. And was previously the pastor of St. Mary Star of the Sea Church in Indian Head. Uh, so he's a very seasoned uh, pastor. He's also a friend of Father Mark's. And I know he's looking forward to coming here. Uh, there will also be a parochial vicar assigned here. Uh, it will probably be one of the men who will be ordained next month. Uh, so you all get to break in uh, who will be ordained priest. So we will find out who that is probably after June 18th. Father Andrew, I know, is unhappy that he was going to be away this weekend, but we, but we have to make the announcements. The announcements will be made at all the churches this weekend. But he has written a letter to the parish community. That letter is being sent out in this weekend's block note email, and can also be, uh, can also be uh, found on the uh, parish website. Uh, so please, you know, if you would like, please uh, take a look at that. Um, I've enjoyed my brief time here. I've been here for three months now. Uh, this has been a really good assignment for me, and it's, I think it's just a really good assignment. Uh, and some people may wonder why I'm not staying on longer since I kind of just got here. Um, I have served as a school pastor for many years, for about, about nine years, at two different parishes. Um, and before being asked to come here and fill in for, for Father Mark, I had requested that my next assignment be one that uh, did not involve the sort of administrative responsibilities of a pastor. And the Archdiocese is, is accommodating me. They, they are honoring my request. And um, even though I have enjoyed being here, I, I feel that this is the best thing for me to do right now to support for personal reasons. Uh, so that's why, that's why I'm moving on. And I know that these sorts of transitions are, are very difficult for parish communities. Um, you know, I've been around uh, long enough to, 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 to know that, to see that. And you all are experiencing a lot of transition in a short time. You have two priests that you've gotten to know uh, very well, both leaving uh, within a few months of each other. And then in addition, there's me, who is leaving just as you're, some of you are just figuring out who I am. Um, and so I know that this is, this is hard, that this is, this is a difficult thing. But I think that you can be confident that the two priests who are coming here will be able to be here for a while. Father Golas should be here for, for many years as the pastor. And I hope that, that the curate, the other priest coming here, will, will have 
several years here too, like Father Andrew did, um, both for, for his sake and, and also for your sake. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for the support and the care and the good examples that you've given me while I've been here. And I just ask you to please keep uh, Father Andrew and me in your prayers uh, during this time. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.